Hello and welcome back to my channel. So my name is Melissa. I'm a mom of three. We are new homeschoolers and I made this channel to share our journey and what's working for us. We, I know are not alone in this season of homeschooling when you never thought you would. So just wanted to share all of this with you guys and I hope you find it helpful. So I'm going to start sharing on Fridays, basically like what we learned this week and how our week was kind of like a recap. So I hope you guys find this interesting. All right. So we had a great, great week. We are living in our RV full time. Stay tuned for, um, the redecoration, but we're not there yet. <laughs> uh, we have done some stuff, but we haven't done anything in here yet. So, uh, yeah but we're living full time in our RV. So we are now in the spot where we're gonna be for the winter, but this week we had to move on Monday. So Monday was a little different for us because we did have to get up in the morning, get everything ready, move to our new spot. So we did start school a little bit later. And here's what I realized. It doesn't matter for our family what time we start, the kids, our kids adapt really, really well. So we're very fortunate in that if we take the morning to do something else or have something else going on, they're okay to get our work done in the afternoon. So they're very flexible, but they do love routine. So they do like to stick to our schedule. It just doesn't matter what time we start. So here's Ted. <laughs> uh, the second thing I wanted to tell you guys was it doesn't matter where you're homeschooling. So we are in a very small RV. I don't know the amount of square feet, but I think it's somewhere around 300. I feel like that's the number, but it might even be smaller than that. Um, it's small and we joke because when we moved to Oregon, I was like, oh, I want, you know, like a 2,500 square foot house, a 2,000 square foot house. That was cute that I said that, but here we are in this little RV. And here's the thing, I love it. I think homeschooling would be a lot more difficult for me in this season if I also had to keep up with a new house, all of those things. I think part of the reason that I'm having a very easy transition into this is because I really don't have a lot of like housework and a lot of things that could pull my attention because I don't have any friends yet. <laughs> we just moved here and I don't have a million projects or things that I can be working on like at home. So I think that that is part of the reason that we are having a very easy transition. Another thing that I find super, super interesting is that now I went to public school. My kids did, the boys did two years of, well, kindergarten, first and second grade in public school. And our daughter did kindergarten. I was a preschool teacher and all of our kids went to preschool. So I did, we did not pull our kids out of public school because we had a problem with public school it is truly just the state of the country right now. Things are very crazy. We had a big move from Connecticut to Oregon. So we really weren't sure like what distance learning would look like, um, without us knowing anybody. So we just decided to do this instead and try. Now, with that being said, we love it. I really, really do. I didn't expect to love it so much. I keep waiting. We're four weeks in. I keep waiting for like, you know, the day where I'm like, oh, I really don't want to do this. And I haven't had that yet. I will say I don't find science super fun to teach, but it's very simple. Everything is laid out for me. And yeah. That would be the only thing that I'm like, Ugh, I don't really like doing that. But you know, I, me personally, I'm not like a big science person. So that makes sense. Uh, anyway, so we did love public school. Our kids did really well in public school. One of the biggest differences that I have found, and I find this super interesting now, I don't know a hundred percent what it was like. I know what it was like when I was younger. So um, when the teacher was teaching, we weren't like playing with Play-Doh or coloring or drawing. We were like listening. And then once we were old enough, we were taking notes or whatever. So I have found that the kids, like when I'm reading to them now we're using sunlight, which is a literature based program. So it's a lot of reading on the parents side. 
my kids love when I read to them. So it is working for us. And like I said, I don't have anything going on. Like I'm not working and we're in our little RV. So I have the time to do that. Um, but kids can color and draw and play with Play-Doh and keep their hands busy while you're reading and still be paying attention and absorbing things. And I find myself a lot saying, like I'll look up and I'll see them like doing something with their hands and I'll be like, what did I say? Or I'll like ask a question like about what I just said and they all answer it. So I think that that's definitely something that is like a learning curve for me. Kids don't have to be like still little statues to be absorbing information. They're constantly learning and digesting things even when they're busy. And I've also found that when their little hands are busy, then they're not as likely to like start chatting with each other or make faces and distract each other. We have twin boys who are eight and eight year old boys are super, super silly. <laughs> so um, when they are keeping their hands busy, I've found that they're not able to distract each other. Another thing that I'm obsessed with, and our boys have liked these books probably for two years now, year and a half, um, but like they've been reading independently since kindergarten. So I haven't really been like reading a lot of their books, but now I am. And I'm obsessed with the Who Was series, Who Was, What Is, um, all of those books. I think that they're incredible. They're so insightful for little kids and it keeps them excited. So we're reading, oh, and they pair really, really well with whatever it is that you're studying because obviously right now we're in an election year. I did a video about how I'm talking to my kids about the election and all of that, but we are in an election year. So the next, it'll be four more years and the boys will be 12 years old the next time there's an election. So there's four years in there. Um, so I did want to start teaching them something and the Who Was series I have found is pairing perfectly with that because there are so many of them. So we got, um, I should have grabbed them. Hold on. So we got, we have so many of these books, but we got four for this, um, uh, what would I call it? Like election um, unit that I'm doing with them. So we got, we started with what is the Declaration of Independence. So I read like a chapter two, three, it really depends on how interested they are, what we're doing for the rest of the day. Uh, yeah. So we're halfway through this one. And then we got, who was George Washington? Uh, what is the constitution and what is a presidential election? So we'll probably do this one next after we finish this. Um, these pair really, really well. I, my daughter is six, so she's not super into this kind of stuff yet, but she is able to sit and listen and engage. So I'm really into these books. So are my boys. And I hope that Autumn enjoys them as much as she, um, is becomes a more confident reader. The other book that I think is, goes really well with this, um, is I survived. And I think I said that in my other video, but if you're looking to get your kid, if they're not super into history, if they are super into history, they're going to love these books. Obviously, if they're not super into history, I think that these books would be an excellent, um, choice for them because it does make it interesting. The who was books, the chapters are very, very short and they do have pictures in them. So they do, um, keep them engaged. And then the I survived books are told from a child's perspective. So like they're doing, I survived the American revolution and it's from a kid's perspective. So it's very interesting for kids. Uh, yeah. And then the last thing that I've kind of been thinking about this week. And again, this comes from somebody who went through public school, enjoyed public school, felt good about the school that my kids were in while they were there. I, again, I didn't pull them for a specific reason, um, because I didn't like what they were experiencing. So I'm not saying this as somebody who does not like the public school, but another thing that I've found interesting this week is like I said, we're using sunlight and it is a literature based program. The mom or the dad, whoever is doing the schooling is reading a lot. So they're like, they call them living books. So like this would be considered it instead of reading like in a history book, um, the declaration of independence, 
reading like whatever a blurb about it or a couple pages in a history book and then going ahead and answering 10 questions or whatever um we're not doing that so like their history book that they're using now I read it to them we have a couple questions that we kind of chit chat about and then that's like how they're learning they're not sitting down and doing a ton of worksheets now they do have spelling words every week they have a math test every week they do have a lot of math worksheets but um I gave them the choice this week because there's let me think I think there's like six or seven worksheets for the week for math and they're very repetitive so in my mind the way I would think about it is they would have like one during the school day and then one for homework and they're front and back so that's a lot of math worksheets now I told them they have the option because now I do the lesson on Monday for math and then they have the whole week to complete those worksheets and then they have their math test on Friday. So I told them this week that they can choose however many worksheets they want to do during their math independent time and that they did not have to complete all of the worksheets if they felt confident enough with the information to do well on their math test. This was the first week that we did that and both the boys and Autumn got all of their questions right for their math test. So I think that that gives them a lot of independence and a lot of self-awareness to see where they need to work more and more practice. So I think I'm gonna let that continue to be how we do it, unless I see that they're not mature enough to you know, do more math work if they need it. But that's kind of the beauty of homeschool and I don't want them to just learn to be able to pass a test. I want them to really be um, taking in all of this information and storing it. So I'm going to play around with that, but that actually worked really well. And I think that it gave them a lot more, um, I don't know, like ambition to do it versus like me sitting there being like, come on, you have another problem. Let's do the next page. I think that it really did um, encourage them in that way. So I am happy with that. And yeah, so that is what we did this week it was another very very good week I'm really really happy with uh, the curriculum that we did choose and I'm excited for October so I'll see you guys next week